John here guys, and today we're talking about the full build of the Arma 10 Mormont, the Marmot, the whatever you want to call the strangely named thing. Oh, nice Mormon. But its beauty, durability, and innovation is of no question. Let's soak it in, take it all in. Look how beautiful this thing is with the space grade carbon. There's quite a lot of features that this thing has that I didn't even notice upon the initial review. So let's start to go through them right after we cover the build itself. Now for the build, I am using the brand new Pyro 32 F345 amp ESC. That is the new version of this board that we talked about the other day. And man, this thing is awesome. This is the new ESC that has an F3 processor on board to help process everything that the ESC needs to do and should yield additional reliability at 45 amps it also has the little blue soft mounts on there now I'm using this with of course the Hyperlite F4 OSD version 2 with the pit mode enabled I'm using my XM plus receiver which I have mounted up at the front the AKK Oscars backpack which I have mounted at the rear I'm using the Lumineer a version of the micro eagle quite nice uh, now this is actually the micro version, so I'm going to share with you how I was able to get that to fit. A fit. We'll fit, Captain. We will not fit. We'll fit. We'll fit. <laughs> and then I'm using the Lumineer Axie Stubby antenna at the back. Uh, to make this a perfectly nice, neat, beautiful build. Uh, now, check out what I've done right here. This ESC requires uh, two capacitors if you're running 6s so i have one right there at the back attached right directly to the vbat pads and then uh, in catalyst uh, format i put the other one right next to the xt60 with a bit of heat shrink um so i decided to bust out this paracord wire wrap stuff that i bought a long time ago when i did my very first premium freestyle build um, which was the initial, the original Armitan Chameleon. So I wanted to bring that back. It's making for some very nice wiring. Look how much cleaner your build is when you use a foreign one, as opposed to these, those huge, ghastly, disgusting looking individual ESCs. Now we'll see if long-term this thing holds up. Um, one thing I was a little concerned about was how tight it was gonna be, but if you look, there's actually plenty of room in there um, to run dual straps here and here. And they have these little notches right here that keeps the straps from sliding. Uh, it comes with the beautiful um, die cut battery pads and your little GoPro soft mount pad up at the top. Perfect. Again, I'm using the Brother Hobby R6 1750K V2207 uh, motors. Now you might be curious, why are you using those motors again? Did you use those on the smooth operator? Why, yes I did, but one, they work so great for carrying a GoPro. And two, I want to eliminate as many variables as possible when these two go head to head to figure out who has the <laughs> freestyle domination. Um, but just soak that thing up for a second, guys. What are the other features that this frame has to offer? Check out all of the mounting um, holes at the bottom. Now you'll notice I have zip ties here, 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 and here. And that's what I'm using to anchor my motor wires. Normally you have to put those zip tie anchors out, you know, somewhere on the arms, but because of how this is laid out, you can actually do it directly underneath the frame, which means that they're out of view, making the build look so much nicer and cleaner. Ooh, I love that. Nice job on that Armitan. Now I was able to go ahead and put my XM Plus running vertically right here. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna permanently mount these antenna wires um, right there. And then at the back, I use these holes to secure my uh, VTX, which I covered in some heat shrink, keep it nice and soft. And then I have my MMCX pigtail running out the back, which attaches perfectly right there to that little carbon mounting thing that they have with a grommet. See how it's a little bit isolated. And I like how, look how the 
Stubby is actually slightly recessed. Only a little bit of it sticks out, which means that in a crash, you're unlikely to ever damage or hit that thing, especially once you put props on this thing. Now, the arms do look a little chunky with just regular wire running down the side. And I've also, on different arms, checked out different ways to secure the motor wire close to the wire. This is Super 33, uh, high temp electrical tape. I have a single zip tie down here. And then I have this one just kind of sat regularly without any anchoring. So I'm testing to see which one of those is going to work the best for me. This thing flies quite well in the air. As you can see, it is an H style frame, meaning that the arms are stretched, but stretched the other way. So there, here's the H right here, if you can see that. And uh, that means that you're really going to get some nice smooth flight out of this thing the flight is going to be very smooth because the props are very far away from each other so that you'll get less dirty air than you would otherwise the other nice thing that you'll know is because of this distance so far away from the sensor cage you will not get any props in view while you're flying this thing which is quite nice i do quite like that um, your view is very prop free now what i have to do to get this micro camera in there i used um I had these little black one millimeter thick washers, uh, metal washers that were of an M2 size. And I had to use two on either side uh, and then that would fit in there. And so this giant lens of the Eagle Micro is protected quite well. So I'm not in any worry or about risking that thing. Here you go. And uh, I have to say guys, this build came out quite well. I really wish they would have used a micro camera mount here, but if you can find a couple of those M2 washers, that's a solution. My suggestion is to take this camera saver thing out, attach these with just to the camera outside of this cage, and then put this thing back in with this little standoff at the front. I tried to kind of do it while it was all in the cage and you'd have to have the dexterity of a surgeon to be able to do that. It was extremely difficult. So just take it all out. Uh, what else can I note? This space grade carbon feels so great in the air, so rigid. And because of the lifetime warranty, I have no worries about crashing this titanium cage of armor at the front at all. So let's get on to the footage. Uh, it flies great. You have absolute peace of mind with this warranty. And that's something that really gives you the confidence to fly it the way that you really want to fly it. But I'm still hesitant to crash it just because I don't want to mar it up or mark it up in any way. Um, but I just love the enhancements there. I love that this protects your top plate. It actually sits on top. So your top plate's unlikely to be damaged. I love how much room you have in the center of the stack right there. I love the looks of this thing. Oh man, it's not many frames that can keep uh, a camera with the large lens of the Eagle Micro 100% protected, but this one can. So I'll show you both some DVR and some GoPro footage of this thing flying around. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Um, I appreciate if you click all the links in the comments if you're gonna be buying anything. Uh, that really helps the channel out. And guys, if you didn't like anything about this video, you wanna give a thumbs down, I have no problems with that, but just please leave me a comment at the same time. Let me know what you didn't like, what I could be doing better, um, and I will try to improve from there. Thanks guys.
Just for the sake.